In music, it's often been a trend for high-profile artists to cross mediums and appear in movies. Typically tailor-made to promote an artist's image, some pictures have been nothing more than eccentric vanity projects. With the exception of an original score, there is no other genre more synonymous with horror than alternate music. Over time, these two mediums have crossed paths on many occasions and delivered some of the most memorable moments in alternate cinema. This is... The Top 10 Rock Stars in Horror. Although there are rock stars who have already made a name for themselves as actors, whether it be a cameo or a starring role, I'll only be including one entry per star. So let's begin. Number 10. The second installment of John Carpenter's Vampire series, Los Muertos follows a team of bounty hunters as they track down a vampire princess. Starring in the lead role as Derek Bliss is 80s rock icon John Bon Jovi. Raising to fame in the 1980s for his powerhouse vocals and exceptional songwriting, Bon Jovi's departure into acting intrigued many fans. Upon its release, this Color by Number sequel was received with mostly negative reviews. Criticized mostly for its lackluster plot, Bon Jovi's performance would also come under fire. Though not deserving of a headline billing, the pulling power of Bon Jovi's name alone turned Los Muertos into a minor hit of 2002. Number 9 From the web series turned movie is the 2014 hidden gem feature Fear Clinic. Starring Robert Englund as Dr. Andover, a psychiatrist with the ability to cure fear, who is aided by Bauer. In a role originally written for Metallica bassist Rob Trujillo, the part was offered to Stone Sour and Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor. After losing out on appearing in Eli Roth's clown due to music commitments, Taylor was eager to break into acting. As a well-renowned horror enthusiast and wannabe actor, Taylor's appearance in the movie came as a surprise to many, not for being awful, but for being competent. Stating in interviews that the character of Bauer was originally intended to die, following Taylor's performance, it was rewritten to allow a return in a potential sequel. Number 8 Possibly the most prolific singer-turned-actor, Henry Rollins had already carved out a successful career in cinema. Making his name in the grunge rock group Rollins Band, he had already appeared in multiple alternate movies, but his role in the 2005 creature feature Feast is the one that stands tall. The under-the-radar Last Stand-style movie sees a group of survivors fighting off a horde of ravenous monsters. Among their number is Coach, a have-a-go hero with zero experience. Bringing a clumsy humor to the picture, Rollins' character would become a fan favorite. Ultimately succumbing to a laugh-out-loud demise, Rollins being used as a human battering ram is a subtle but arguably the most hilarious death of the picture. Number 7 David Bowie was without question one of the most versatile and visionary artists of his generation. Branching into cinema, one of his first ventures would be the dark romantic drama The Hunger. Starring as John Blaylock, a vampiric classical musician in a 200-year-long relationship with fellow vampire Miriam. Learning that he has eternal life but not eternal youth, he finds himself aging at an accelerated rate. Struggling to find a way to reverse the process, the movie becomes a race against time before withering away into a decrepit corpse. Released in 1983, Bowie impressed many critics by delivering a surprisingly professional performance, and although forgotten by many, the Hunger Remains a well-respected movie. Number 6 As a regular cameo performer in horror, no other appearance has been more complimentary than his brief appearance as President Lemmy. Frontman of the iconic British metal band Motorhead, Lemmy Kilmister was always an enthusiast of alternate cinema. Appearing in 30 separate pictures, he also featured in many trauma classics. His role in Return to Newcomb High would sadly be one of his final. This short but sweet cameo comes at the very beginning of the movie. Cast as President Lemmy, his literal phoned-in appearance would kickstart the insanity that is synonymous with trauma. Sadly passing away in 2015, Kilmister's contributions to both music and cinema left behind one of the greatest alternate legacies in pop culture. Number 5 from the cult classic The Rocky Horror Picture Show is the first mainstream appearance of who would become one of the biggest rock stars on the planet. 
using the production as a stepping stone for his own musical career. Milo's breakout role as Eddie, a failed experiment of Frankenfurter, would propel him into the spotlight. Exploding into the movie, his performance of Hot Patootie Bless My Soul momentarily steals the movie from the outstanding Tim Curry. Causing total chaos in the lab, Eddie's brief appearance would become one of the most memorable. Ultimately being hacked to pieces by Frank, this one performance would catch the attention of Epic Records and fully establish the larger-than-life rock star. Number 4 From one of the most beloved psychological horror movies of the 80s is blondie frontwoman Debbie Harry as Nikki Brand, a psychiatrist who becomes the face of Max Reed's descent into madness. Setting to discover the origin of Videodrome, she unwittingly becomes the victim of the mysterious network. This bizarre yet captivating appearance puts Harry at the front line of the movie's insanity. Adding an air of sex and glamour to the picture, Harry's role was met with high praise. She would also have a second notable appearance in horror in Tales from the Dark Side the movie as an idealistic cannibal housewife, but will always be remembered in horror as the face of Videodrome. Number 3 As the self-proclaimed villain of rock, it was only a matter of time before Alice Cooper hit the silver screen. Released in 1991, Freddy's Dead The Final Nightmare would explore the genesis of the Springwood Slasher. Seeing Kruger as a young man, we learn he was the victim of domestic abuse. It's here we discover that his father is Alice Cooper. In this short but important scene, it's Cooper that becomes the first victim of Kruger. The real name Vincent Fernier agreed to the uncredited role under the condition that he be not be cast as the Alice Cooper character. Out of all of his appearances in horror, Cooper has stated that being Freddy Krueger's father and instrumental in the genesis of the iconic villain is by far his favorite role. Number 2 Bram Stoker's Dracula was a mixed bag for many moviegoers. Featuring outstanding performances from Anthony Hopkins and Gary Oldman, of the supporting cast, it was singer Tom Watts that shone above his peers. Cast as the iconic Renfield, no one was expecting Watts' performance to be so ideal. Having only minor experience in acting, he would overshadow his co-stars Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder. Featuring his trademark gravelly vocals, Watts' artistic connection to insanity would become forefront of his performance, bringing an unsettling and demented chaotic which was highly complimentary to Renfield. Never straying too far from the screen, Watts has since become a well-respected bit-part actor. If you enjoyed the Men at Top 10s, show your appreciation by hitting the thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe to keep up with the channel. Also, have your say in future Top 10s and follow Demented Pictures on Facebook and consider supporting the show on Patreon. Links in the description box below. Number 1 For any big part actor, the dream job is that of an on-screen death. In Saw 3D, the late rock star Chester Bennington got to do just that and delivered with wonderfully gory and elaborate execution. As lead vocalist for iconic metal band Linkin Park, Bennington only had minor experience in acting following a cameo in Jason Statham's Crank Dilogy. Having been glued to a car seat, he has to tear the flesh from his body to prevent the death of his friends and himself. Failing the game, he is skinned alive. Also showcasing impressive practical effects, the movie was shunned for being nothing more than a thinly scripted cash grab, but delivering his iconic powerhouse screen, Chester's scene was arguably the highlight of the movie. Bennington would always be remembered as one of the greatest new metal vocalists of all time, whose contribution to horror and cinema will always be remembered. So there was my list. Were there any I missed? Which rock stars in horror do you love the most? 
Leave a comment below and consider checking out some of the other Demented Top 10s on screen now. And as always, this is Mike from Demented Pictures saying, may your movies be bloody and your scares be shitless.